Hello friends, my name is Hamid. Uh, today I'm working on this uh, Sub-Zero refrigerator. Uh, you can use this as a little small fridge and also has an ice maker. The customer's complaint is that it's leaking water on the floor and it's damaging the floor, the cabinets around this. So today I will show you how to fix this. Um, it's a little bit complicated job compared to the normal repairs I do, but I ask the customer to drop it off in my place and then I can uh, repair it and send it back to you. I'll show you how to fix this. I have this special plat uh, platform made on this. Uh, it's not only for this one, I use this for wall ovens, um, microwaves, uh, if it's under counter microwave, and I want to put that especially for sharp microwaves. That way, it's not going to cause any issues pulling the units out. Uh, I'm going to jack it up and I'll work on it after. I think this is uh, up enough, I can work on it. So what's happening here is that when it goes to the defrost cycle, you see all of this water, it flows there from, from there, there's a little small hole. It's supposed to go under the unit and then evaporate from there, but it's not happening. Uh, the model number on this unit is Right here, this is the model and serial number. That's the one thermostat control. And here's the another one. And an ice maker, you can also turn it on and off. If this bell arm is up, it's an off position. If it's down, it's an off on position. If you look at this um, platform here that splits the unit half and half. Uh, so you can use this area as a little a small fridge and then the bottom uh, side would be your ice maker uh, so the bottom side would be more colder compared to the upper uh, portion um, so i'm gonna have to take this off if you look at this it has uh, they have used silicone from the factory uh, i don't mind taking this off uh, getting rid of this uh, silicone to make my job easier when i'm doing the repair and then after that i can uh, we add silicone clear silicone or white silicone it doesn't matter you want to make sure this portion is sealed back if you look at it some of the silicone is already out you can put your hand and kind of force it out it splits open you see the silicone and here's the ice maker box in order to open this part you see this one and the bottom one that one needs to come out see these clips they're out now this top portion comes out Disconnect the ice maker. So here from here, we're gonna disconnect all of these wires. Again, if you don't know what goes where, take pictures or get a marker. You can mark it down so that way you will not make a mistake. So here I got this marker, this goes to the heater, I will just mark it down like this, disconnect, and then there's one more uh, auxiliary heater, I will just put dots on it, like that, disconnect it, and then this one is the, the defrost thermostat, so I'll put two lines here, two lines here, disconnect. Ice maker, everything is gonna come out after this, so you can just keep it on the side. And I'll show you the inside here. You see this slot open here? Stick a screwdriver, 
this auxiliary heater goes all the way to the bottom of this this hole you pull it out can you see that hole right there at the bottom there is a hole that hole is filled with garbage and debris what i'm gonna do is i'll have to blast it with um with the steamer i have got my steamer ready here So the steamer uh, softens it up and then I'm gonna have to go to the back of it or turn it around. You see that little small hose there? That's the hose that the water's supposed to go from there. And then it, uh, this is the drip pan, it drips into this. I'm gonna have to clean that hose. It's, I know it's not gonna be an easy job, but I have no choice. I have to get there to clean it somehow. What I'm gonna do is I have to take the screws out from these uh, side corners. Like look at this screw, that one and that one. And the same thing I have it on the other side. I'm gonna take all of those out. And here's how it looks from the front. Once I take all of those out, I will be able to pull the unit a little bit away. I got a couple of these airbags. I might be uh, using one or two of these. Just remember all the seal system, all the seal system stuff is here, your copper lines, gas lines, everything is here. You want to be very careful to not cause any leak. If you cause any freon or gas leak, then you're, you're going to get in trouble. You can still fix it, but it's going to be a big job after that. So this is a risky job and that's why I want to take my time and work on it. Look now. The unit is a little bit up so I can have a little bit of extra access to this um, unit. Those hoses I want to pull out and clean. cut this area I know I, I cannot return back I still have to complete the job here the good part is I work uh, on a lot of sub-zero fridges this pipe that you can see this hose that goes under there I have a long piece like a couple feet of that I can cut a piece similar to this and we install it back in but man this is a big job I wouldn't call it a big job it's just tricky because look at the these lines the capillary tube it's close by if I force it too much and by mistake it snaps so I'm gonna cut that and then uh, my problem will get bigger. See this? It's, there's a water flow from here. The similar paste permagam they use it inside of the unit and that's why over time after 15-20 years this goes inside of the this pipe and then it plugs it badly. Uh, I remember I cleaned this pipe a couple of years ago for this customer. Um, it was okay and then they called back again. I went back again in their house and I said, you know, this time I have to do a proper work. I cannot just clean it and let it sit and then you call back after another couple of uh, months or year. So the proper way is to completely get rid of this this old pipe and install a new one that's all okay i may want to get a flat screwdriver so far i'm doing good um i'm holding my hand on top of the capillary tube because in case of the 
flat screwdriver slabs that's gonna cause issues i don't want that i do not want this problem to get bigger than this look at this look from inside it's completely black mm, i'll cut a hose like this or uh, because I damaged this a little bit on the side you see there's a little a small hole I cannot reuse it if you have no choice and you want to use it yes you can use it you have to add some electrical tape or aluminum uh, tape or just add some glue in it it's gonna fix it but I wouldn't recommend because this is a really old one I, it took you like almost half an hour to replace this part or clean it you might as well replace it with a new one I did a little bit clean up on this to use the same hose and clean the inside of stuff. And I'm gonna go and use the steamer from inside. And here we go, this is the longer piece that I use it on other fridges I'm gonna have to cut a piece okay, just cut a little bit extra just to be safe You can always put your fingers under the bottom of this uh, flexible pipe and then help it with a screwdriver to bring it up and you have to have a little bit of vibration from the bottom go up back and forth like this and what you can do to make your job easier i would say maybe use a steamer to get it a little bit warmed up that way maybe it's gonna help you also do not want to use a sharp uh, flat screwdriver or don't go hard on it because you can uh, crack the hose again and then it's gonna cause issues um, if possible, I would try my best to use my nails and fingers, but if not, then you can always use this or uh, something like a plastic to just help it go all the way up. Since I used the steamer from inside, I can see a big improvement. Um, the hose is more flexible and uh, soft now. I can see that it's, it's going up easily. It's not perfect, but it's way better than before. And then the rest, even manufacturer has used uh, permagam. This one I have permagam. I'm gonna use fresh permagam here and see how it goes. I think this is enough. And in order to use this, you may wanna play around with it softens it it's like a chewing gum the more you play around with it it gets more softer and if you're not patient what you can do is put this in in the microwave for 30 seconds it gets very soft and then you can come and use it but i prefer just re-softening it with my hand playing around back and forth like a play-doh
see how how nice it looks. Even if you leave it like this, nothing is gonna happen. You're perfectly fine. Uh, you don't see any problem. But zip tie will kind of hold it like a P-trap. So uh, holding it by P-trap means that you will never get water emptied from this area because if the water gets emptied from here and if the hose is not like that so for example if you just put this hose on the ground it will always have air leak inside of the unit and it's going to cause a cooling issue so that's why they make it uh, they make a kink on it that looks like a p-trap i also have this uh, auxiliary heater that i recommend you on installing one of these um, the part number is this 7014666 this one is about $50 uh, if you can install one of these good if not then you have to uh, clean the existing uh, auxiliary heater on the unit with your steamer and that also takes care of the problem my p-trap hose is good now be careful when you bring the unit down this uh, pipe see there's also a little smaller scratch because it was hitting here so what you can do is you may want to find a cardboard piece or just cut a piece of pipe like this Hold it in your hand and then you can. If you look at this side, it's a little bit bent it out, you can hammer it back. So just to show you something here, you see that uh, hose I installed, the auxiliary heater comes all the way to the back of that where the nipple was coming out, that aluminum nipple, the auxiliary heater gets to that and then it stays there. See all of this uh, permagam on this corner, the permagam buildup on this corner is all because of the evaporator lines are going in that corner and from manufacture they use permagam on the side and that permagam also causes this issue. So the main problem if the, the hole gets plugged like that is because of the permagam from the, from the side, I'll show you here. So you see that? corner permagam i will try my best to uh, push it back in and seal it somehow if i can't then the only way to get rid of all of that permagam is to uh, pull the evaporator out if this customer ever gets seal system problem in future then that would be a perfect time to get rid of all, all of that permagam and add proper silicone and then silicone will not deteriorate like this permagam and cause all of this issue to install this properly, you may want to take the, the screws out from the evaporator so you can move the evaporator a little bit and then it goes underneath it properly. You see, um, again, you want to make sure the auxiliary heater is good. Also, you want to test it before uh, you reinstall it back in. The auxiliary heater should give you about 2000 ohms, uh, 2000 ohms on room temperature. I selected the ohms and resistance. Yeah, so 1.95 thousand ohms is good. So first of all, you want to make sure the the heater is straight, like this. If it's bent or crooked or um, it has some kind of um, abnormal uh, bends on it, do not use it. Maybe replace it with a new one. Also, you want to make sure it's clean. Use your steamer to get rid of all the dirt and 
uh, debris and then after that uh, the location that you're gonna insert you see there's one two three there's uh, three holes you want to stick this on the center at the center that center hole goes straight to that little small hole right there you can always stick a screwdriver down so by inserting a screwdriver this is not long enough but you can still uh, get a longer one it makes extra hole in here the hole gets bigger and then that way you can add your uh, auxiliary heater easily see how easy and nice it goes and now we are going to look at it from the bottom once i insert it here you see the auxiliary heater and then now you can what you can do is um, get a screwdriver line it up into the hole just like that there you go here that's important to always clean a few if you see any kind of debris because any of the debris uh, that or build up that you can find from here and if you don't clean it eventually it's gonna go in that hole and the castle will have the exact same problem these two and pull on it a little bit make sure it's tight pull on it to this connection you hear that click noise all the electrical wires supposed to come in this cage and then close it also when you're closing this remember that you do not want any of these uh, electrical wires coming closer to the fan because if this fan hits these it's not going to run and the cooling system will want, will not work properly these screws are not um, magnetic they're stainless steel you do not want to drop these off down there if you drop it off you're going to have a hard time to pull it out because then you're going to have to take the this little small uh, box or cage out pull the auxiliary out and then work on it from there you don't want that just be very very careful when you reinstall these screws maybe hold it with your hand and do not uh, do not try to be as smart as by using a magnetic screw because if you do that you can get the job done but what happens is it's gonna rust out and then that's another problem do a proper job uh, don't be lazy this one that, it's just a little small heater that goes into this uh, pipe to make sure it doesn't freeze the reading on this one is also good you see it's about 3000 ohms this may want to turn it so it sits on the side here like that that's okay Also double check these lines to make sure there's no holes, no uh, cuts or anything. This part gets inserted right here. Maybe do a little bit cleaner. The unit is fixed. Um, I still have to test this unit, keep it here for the next couple of days just to make sure everything is working perfectly fine. Um, it has to defrost and then I will also check it to make sure when it's defrosting the water close to the bottom not leaking from inside uh, the ice maker should be working before this uh, unit leaves my place and as far as I know everything seems okay I have to put the back panel back in add silicone uh, in three corners of the this um, a splitter and then I'm gonna plug it in and keep on it and see how it goes thank you so much for watching my videos if you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. I share my videos with others. You can also follow me on Facebook. It's called Hamid Appliances Repair. Thank you so much.